today we will be talking about Hodgkin's lymphoma, a type of cancer that affects the lymphatic system. Our guest today is Dr. Leona Marx. Dr. Marx, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your background in treating pediatric cancer? Yeah, hi, and thank you for having me. Um, you know, I wanted to be a doctor from an early age, and I always knew I wanted to work with kids. So I was really interested in becoming a pediatrician. And along the way, I got to work with some wonderful child life specialists at um, an oncology clinic where I was shadowing. And that's what really got me interested in working with patients who had pediatric cancer. And so now I'm currently a physician at Stanford, and I focus on helping to treat children who have pediatric lymphomas, including Hodgkin lymphoma. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, so let's start with the basics. What is Hodgkin's lymphoma and how is it different from other types of lymphoma? So as you mentioned, Hodgkin lymphoma is a type of cancer that affects the lymphatic system, which is part of the immune system in your body. And usually our immune system um, helps us fight infections, but sometimes cells in it can start growing out of control and essentially they become cancers such as lymphoma. Now, Hodgkin lymphoma is a type of lymphoma that's different from really the other category of lymphomas, which are non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And there are a few things that are unique about it. It has a different cell that is thought to be the malignant cell causing the cancer, and that's called the Hodgkin-Reed-Sternberg cell. And it also affects a slightly different age group of patients. Usually patients with Hodgkin lymphoma are teenagers and young adults, whereas other non-Hodgkin lymphomas are more common in kids under 10. And Hodgkin lymphoma um, is generally slower growing than many of the non-Hodgkin lymphomas, but it can still uh, definitely make patients very sick. Thank you for explaining that. Uh, what are the common signs and symptoms of Hodgkin's lymphoma and how is it diagnosed? Great questions. So I think the most common sign of Hodgkin lymphoma is you might feel a lump somewhere in your body, which is usually an enlarged lymph node. Most often it presents in your neck um, or sort of right around your collarbone. And that is the enlarged lymph node, which is a sign of Hodgkin lymphoma. The other signs that we watch out for that could be a sign are things like having a fever, for an unknown reason, um, if you're just really more tired than usual, or if you're losing weight. All of those things could be a sign of Hodgkin lymphoma, but of course they could also be related to a lot of other issues. And then to your next question about how we diagnose it, um, the most helpful thing is we actually need to get a piece of the tissue so that we can look under the microscope and that's how we really diagnose Hodgkin lymphoma. So in order to do that, we need to do a biopsy, which essentially is taking a piece of the enlarged lymph node so that we can do all of these additional tests and find out what's causing it to be enlarged. Can Hodgkin's lymphoma be inherited, and are there any genetic tests that can be done to check if you have a predisposition to the disease? Yeah, we are actually learning more about the genetics of Hodgkin lymphoma all the time. And I will say right now, there's no specific test or specific gene we know that increases your risk. Um, but in recent studies, people have showed that there may be a few genes that sort of in combination put people at risk or families at risk for developing Hodgkin lymphoma. So I think that's an area where there's a lot of you know research and interest right now, but there's not a specific test you can do necessarily to find out whether or not you're at risk for getting Hodgkin lymphoma. Can the disease spread to other parts of the body and how is this prevented during treatment? When you are diagnosed with Hodgkin lymphoma, one of the first things we'll do is we'll get a full body PET scan that will look at every part of your body and see if there's any 
evidence of Hodgkin lymphoma. Um, that's what we use to help stage you. Uh, there are stages one through four, and you are stage one if there's only one site of disease and stage four if we see it really all over your body. So we know that information at diagnosis. And so the vast majority of the time when we start treatment, um, we expect everything to get better. However, we usually do another full body scan about halfway through treatment, and that helps us to assess how you're responding to treatment and make sure the Hodgkin lymphoma is getting better. And so usually on that scan, we expect the disease to be going away. However, in very rare circumstances, I'd say less than five to 10% of the time, we see that the disease is actually spreading. And so that usually makes us concerned that for whatever reason, your Hodgkin lymphoma is not responding to the treatment the way we think it would. And so then we usually change the treatment. But most often, the disease at diagnosis is, you know, the worst it will be, and it will then get better throughout treatment. That sounds very important to keep in mind. Uh, after treatment, can Hodgkin's come back? If so, what can be done to prevent this from happening? Unfortunately, it is always possible that Hodgkin's can come back after treatment. And oftentimes that is a relapse within the first year after you stop treatment, but sometimes it could even be several years down the road that Hodgkin's comes back. And so, you know, that is the risk that we are always hoping to prevent. And that's why I think it's so important to choose a good treatment regimen um, that both minimizes those long-term side effects I was talking about, but also you want it to be really effective up front. And fortunately in Hodgkin lymphoma, many of the treatment regimens are over 90% effective, meaning when we give them, we expect the disease to come back less than um, 10% of the time. Um, but certainly for patients who have high-risk lymphoma, um, they are more at risk for having it come back. And so I think that although we're always improving treatments, um, really what we are ultimately trying to prevent is that the disease comes back because we also have really good treatments for Hodgkin's if it does come back, um, but those also are more intensive and have more side effects that we worry about. So it's really important that we get treatment right the first time as much as possible. Thank you so much, Dr. Marks, for joining us today. 